Today we're going to have a bit of a change of theme. Uh, as I've mentioned in my books, uh, the Boers uh, had this passion of carving their names on the rifles. Uh, the, the level of artistry uh, or the level of competency depended on each individual. Uh, some of the guys were very artistic, some of the people weren't at all. Some of them barely scratched their names or initials on the rifles and others were only semi-literate. Uh, so you get a huge variety and a big range of uh, different types of carvings, mainly of names, but also farm names, uh, birth dates, battle names, etc, etc. Today I'm going to just go through four rifles which I have here. Uh, we'll look at each one individually. The first three are M95 uh, bore Mauser rifles. <clears throat> now, this particular rifle has got a lovely honey-coloured stock. Uh, it's got an initial very roughly carved um, on this side of the butt, which is SN. We've got to look at it quite carefully to work out what it is. So we turn that around and what I suspect happened is this guy probably put his own initials SN on the, uh, the Mauser when he first got it. At a later stage, I think he probably got hold of a bloke who was a lot more artistic than himself. And he's very neatly carved S.J. Nyetlin. Now, if you look very closely, the S is the wrong way around. And so is the N. Very neatly done, but in fact, not correct. Now, another strange thing about this particular rifle, which is in lovely condition, um, Nyetlin is the phonetic pronunciation of the surname. But in actual fact, the spelling is phonetic. It's not correct. It should be N-E-W-E-T-H-L-I-N-G. Nyetlung. There are a couple of variations, but there's none like this, N-E-T-L-E-N-G. As I said, Nyetlung is how you actually pronounce it. So that's obviously the way he thought it would be spelt. Can't knock him for that. He tried hard. So, yeah, that's a really nice rifle. Uh, it's in really nice condition. Lovely honey-coloured stock. Uh, interesting story about um, a boar putting his name down in a very nice artistic fashion, but not really quite correct. The next one we have here, once again, M95 Bore Mauser Rifle. Um, this is an OBS one. Uh, the interesting thing here is we've got um, the, it's an 1897. Most of the Mausers were 1896, if you normally see. This is 1897 and it's an OBS Mauser. So it's got the OBS prefix uh, that you see on the left hand side of the uh, receiver ring. Now this fellow's name was uh, Diedrichs. You might be able to see here, he's got J. J. Diedrichs. Uh, quite neatly done, uh, and I've seen quite a few uh, in this sort of relief type carving. Um, nothing else I found out where this guy was from. He was from Rustenburg. There were two boars, so I'm not quite sure who this particular guy was, but certainly it's in my book, as all these rifles are, and the story about the guy is, is in the book, in my first book, actually. So there we have it, another M95 uh, Mauser rifle, a bit different because of the OBS uh, serial number as opposed to the A series or a B series, etc. Now, I was delighted when I bought this M95 rifle some years ago. I knew about it. A good friend of mine had this. Um, you see something slightly different with this rifle. It's had the top section of the butt shaped. You can see it's been cut out here, and I don't know if you can see this. It's got a hollow section on this side of the butt. I didn't quite know what this was until I actually got the rifle. And when you put the rifle up to your shoulder, it suits a left-hand shooter. So this guy, the, uh, he's shaped this butt to suit himself. So that tucks into his cheek quite nicely. Uh, just something, uh, you know, something which has personalized the rifle. And to make it more interesting, uh, he's put his name very neatly over here inside a sort of a border with a bit of scroll work up here. It looks a bit like a, uh, a pattern or a design. And it's L, a C L Serpentine. Now I've managed to find out quite a lot about this guy. And this, uh, this rifle appears in my part three book. Uh, I found out the farm that he came from. Uh, the name of his father was Jan Ludewijk uh, Serpentine. Uh, the farm was split into two. Uh, this guy being the son had one of the, uh, one of the farms. The father had the other part of the farm. And I've also got a Boer medal, which is the anglo Boerloch medal, the uh, anglo Boer War campaign medal, uh, which was awarded to J.L. Serpentine. Now, as I said, this guy, his father was J.L. Serpentine, Jan Ruedebeek. 
And that medal was to an artillerist, uh, J.L. Serpentine, in the OBS Artillery Corps. So they came from the same town. I'm quite sure that this guy and this guy were cousins. This guy is named after this chap's father. Sounds all too close to me to be a coincidence. So yeah, there we have it. Uh, Bormhauser, which has been personalised. Um, love the idea. It fits perfectly in your cheek if you're a left-hand shooter. Something very different. And as I said, I've managed to tell a story about where the guy came from, um, etc., etc. I've even got his uh, wedding certificate uh, and his death certificate. Now, last but not least, um, here we have uh, what used to be a Lee Enfield uh, rifle. Uh, this is a sad story in a way, but I've managed to preserve history to an extent. Uh, a friend of mine picked this up at a gun show, but all that was left was the, was the butt and the forend. Uh, there's a very, very nice carving of the ZAR coat of arms here on the uh, right hand side of the butt. And also another decoration, which it appears to me has never been finished. Um, it's a sort of checkered uh, situation over here, uh, but just abruptly stopped. So whether the guy was captured or shot, who knows? But what he's done is a lot of boars did is they were used, they were hunting nation. They were used to hunting rifles. And as we all know, uh, hunting rifles, sporting rifle tends to have a short stock. He's cut back the stock. And as you can see at the top, he's actually got uh, what appears to be the claw of a tiger or a cat or a leopard. Um, so he's very ornately uh, finished off the, the front forend of this of this carbine. Um, it's actually a rifle, as I said, which has been cut down to a carbine. Uh, I had to uh, butcher uh, a Lee Enfield, a really old Lee Enfield, and put this together. Uh, I got a, a gunsmith to do the bolt for me, um, and it, it was better than throwing away two bits of wood, which were living history. Um, so there we have it. It's really only a wall hanger, but certainly there's a lot of history involved. It's a great pity that the board didn't put his name on the woodwork. Uh, that would have possibly told a, a more interesting story. But there we have it. Um, cut down the infield rifle into a carbine length. Um, quite interesting. And I love the, uh, the leopard paw in the front. Something a bit different. If you enjoyed the presentation and you'd like to buy one or all three of my books, just have a look at the link below in the description. Thank you.